رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا مولانا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إذ قال يوسف لأبيه يا أبت إني رأيت أحد عشر كوكبا والشمس والقمر رأيتهم لي ساجدين صدق الله العظيم Alhamdulillah, we listen to Surah Hud and Surah Yusuf and the 12th <coughs> Sparah. Uh, Surah Yusuf is very interesting because it outlines the story of Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam. Inshallah, the, the ayat that I've recited is, is talking about dreams and the dream of Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam. According to the, most of the, the scholars, when Sayyidina Yusuf was seven years old, he was sleeping on the lap of his father Sayyidina Yaqub alayhi salam. And he had a dream that he saw 11 stars and he saw the sun and the moon and they were they had gone down into prostrate, prostration in front of him. When the seven-year-old child gets up, he says to his father, Sayyidina Yaqub, who is a prophet and he's a son of Sayyidina Ishaq. He says, Oh my father, inni ra'aytu ahada ashara kawkaba, that I saw 11 stars. Washamsa wal qamara, ra'aytuhum li sajideen. I saw the sun and the moon and they were prostrating towards me. Now his father Sayyidina Yaqub was a prophet. So what he realized was that this dream in itself, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was telling Sayyidina Yaqub that out of all his sons, Sayyidina Yusuf والسلام, was going to be blessed with, with prophethood and he's going to be the Nabi. And the scholars say that the 11 stars represent his brothers, the moon and the sun represent his parents. And then prostrating towards him means that they accept the ahkam and the ruling of Sayyidina Yusuf wow. Next ayah, what does his father says? La taqsus ru'iyataka ala ikhwatika. That, oh my son, do not tell your brothers this dream. Why? Because I fear that they will harm you or they will do something to you. And this is what exactly what happens in, in the surah. Now the, the word Yusuf in itself is, is a non-Arab non -Arab name. And three ways the scholars say, you can pronounce it Yusuf with the Dhamma on the scene, Yusuf with the Fatha, or Yusuf with, with the Kasra. Three are, are fine, and that's how they're actually said. Now, Sayyidina Yusuf, salam, his brothers take him out and they drop him in the well, and they come back and they tell their father that, you know, a, sh a wolf has ate them and has devoured him. And obviously, Yaqub understands that what they've done with Sayyidina Yusuf. Salam. The story beautifully continues and it really tells us that the beginnings are always difficult but at the end, if you go through difficulties, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you a great reward. And that's what happened to Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi From a young age, he was separated from his, his parents, his father, he went into slavery but later how he was made the minister and then the ruler of Egypt. So he went through a very tough period and how he did that. Now the interesting thing for us is the concept of dreams. The Prophet والسلام, himself said that dreams is one fortieth of Nabuwa. And although modern uh, psychologists, they don't really accept dreams. They say that it's just what you've been thinking about during the day. This is what you're going to think about during the night. But according to Islam, dreams are one way of communicating with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his Prophet In a Sahih hadith of the Prophet والسلام, he وسلم, said that if you get a good dream, you do the hamd and shukr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you have a bad dream, right, you wake up, you turn towards your left and you would spit out slowly three times. And the scholars say because that the bad dream is actually a waswasa from the shaitan. We're told that every one of us has, has a shaitan with us. And whenever you have that bad dream, it's the shaitan that's actually doing the waswasa to you. But the Prophet والسلام, interestingly, he actually received wahi revelation through dreams. The Prophet ﷺ, often when he went to sleep, he would receive revelation through actual dreaming. And for us, that's why there was adab and there were sunnahs of going to sleep. So before we went to sleep, the Prophet ﷺ said to us that, try your best to sleep with wudu, face towards your right hand side and read the dua. And when you wake up, you wake up and the first thing you actually do is you read the dua. Because the dreams are something which connects us to the, the wider reality. In the hadith of Sahih Muslim, the Prophet ﷺ said, Man ra'ani fil manami fasayarani fil yakda. That whoever sees me in his dreams, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would give and bless him the vision whilst, and he will see me whilst he is actually in the state of, state of being awake. 
Wow. It's talking about the Prophet wow. And many ulama later, whenever they would get stuck with mas'ala, fiqh rulings, or a hadith, they would pray to Nafal, go to sleep, and they would ask the Prophet sallallahu about wow. that. Wow. Imam Suyuti rahmatullah was a very famous buzurk from, from Egypt who wrote over 500 books. He says that a person came to me and said to me that, can you go to the king or can you go to the, the ruling party and ask a favor from them? And Imam Suyuti was a scholar at that time. He says, my brother, if I go to these polit and the politicians were very corrupt at that time. I don't know how different it is now, but in his time, they were very corrupt. And Imam Suyuti rahmatullah says to, to, says to him that, oh, my brother, you do not understand. I have seen the Prophet والسلام, over 70 times in my dreams. I am a hadith scholar. And each time when a scholar writes this hadith is da'if, I have to ask the Messenger وسلم, if this hadith is sahih or not. I fear if I go to and sit with these politicians, the Prophet will totally veil himself from me. So dreams were very important and they were a form of connection. We, we hear stories where, where people would, would see their, their parents and their grandparents in their dreams. And the scholars in Imam Qurtubi very famously, he, he said in his tafsir that when you're asleep, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes a soul from you. You're actually in the state of dead. You're actually dead. That's why when you wake up, the dua is, Alhamdulillah ladhi ahyana ba'da ma amatana wa ilayhi nushur. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Alhamdulillah ladhi ahyana. All praises to Allah who has given us life after he has actually caused his death. And Imam Qurtubi says that whilst we're asleep, our souls are roaming around. So in your sleep, when you see your deceased father or your deceased grandfather or your great-great-grandfather and you see him in your dreams, the scholars say that, that the souls are actually meeting in the alam arwah. And when you wake up, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala returns them soul back into the body. So for Sayyidina Yusuf والسلام, this was something called a ruya as sadiqa The dream, which is a true dream that comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is called a ruya as sadiqa And in Surah Yusuf, the bad ru'ya or the, or, or the dream that comes from the shaitan is called Adghatul Ahlam. That's come from the shaitan. So the scholars, the awliya, and even the believers like us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the tawfiq of ru'ya sadiqa. Many of us see dreams in the night and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides you in your way. And that's why we're told also to do dua istikhara, to seek khair. Why? And when you have a dream, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala points you towards, towards good. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us, give us tawfiq to, to, to sleep according to the sunnah of the Prophet alayhi wa and give us all tawfiq to have good dreams and to see the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.